meeting requirements by Virginia law were discussed in the closed meeting to which this certification applies, and only such public business matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Okay, do we have a second? We have a motion and second. Madam Clerk? Patrick Chase is absent. Ms. Decatur? Agreed. Ms. Egan? Agreed. <clears throat> Ms. Hazard? Agreed. Ms. Healy? Agreed. Mr. McCosker? Agreed. Ms. Young? Agreed. Madam Chair, motion passes. Do we have a motion coming out of closed session? Yes, Madam Chair, we have a motion. I move that the Stafford County School Board accept the uh, contract of the new superintendent of Stafford County Schools. Okay, do we second. have a second? All right, motion by Mr. McOsker, second by Ms. Young. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. All right, this is what everyone's waiting for. We have appointed Dr. Scott Kisner as our superintendent. Dr. Kisner will begin as our superintendent on September 1st, 2018, following his return from a Global Education First conference taking place in Helsinki and Berlin. That's why he's not with us this evening. Um, Dr. Kisner joins Stafford County from Harrisonburg City Public Schools, where he has served as the superintendent since 2010. Harrisonburg is a progressive and diverse growing school system that ranks as one of the best in Virginia. The vi division received numerous awards and recognitions as an exceptional school system focused on high expectation learning for all. As the leader of one of the fastest growing school systems in Virginia, Dr. Kisner had great success in obtaining the funds needed to build new schools and complete needed capital building projects. Dr. Kisner began his career teaching students with special education needs, including autism, emotional, and learning disabilities. He also served as a school psychologist. Dr. Kisner received his master's degree in counseling psychology and his education specialist degree in school psychology from James Madison University. He completed his doctorate of psychology from the Virginia Polytechnic Institute and State University. The school board is extremely pleased to welcome Dr. Scott Kisner to Stafford County Public Schools and to our community and to build a long-term partnership to lead our division. Dr. Kisner will be with us uh, full-time in September and he will also be uh, visiting with us sometime in August to, to get acquainted with us during, um, during the transition. Oh yes, he is moving to Stafford and his wife is excited to come to Stafford. So we're all just gonna have to have a housewarming when they move in, right? <laughs> so this, this, is, uh, this is really exciting news, so. Thank you all very much and I, I wanna um, to thank our board. I, I have to say this was one of the most efficient and timely appointments that I have participated in and I have participated in many superintendent. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, he, and he will be here, as I understand, one September. Yes. So not end of September, so it'll be one September. September 1st, with us on board, ready, ready to, to hit go. the ground. But he, he, he will also be, be uh, visiting us during uh, August for, for the transition, although um, you know, we can't expect him full time because he does have other responsibilities. I'd like to also have a special thank you to Ms. Jamie Decatur for um, preparing a uh, uh, communications, a communique, that she'll send over to Miss Ms. Sheree Johnson. Uh, it's in your inbox. It's already, already, already in your inbox, so I appreciate it, Mr. Cater. All right, now I am signing the contract, <laughs> which has just been approved, passing it to our clerk, and I understand there's been requests for this, and it will be available upon request. So, thank you. Now, that gets us back to our regular business. We have a full agenda this evening. First. Do we have to close the special? Oh, meeting? that's right, that's right. Let's close this meeting, well. I don't know. <laughs> I think we're closed, right? I thought we were open. We, had a, we, we did our readout, we did, we did our action. Okay. Anything else, no other action coming out of the special. meeting? So we are closing that meeting and going into our regular meeting. Following our two hour work session. <laughs> Long night. All right. I guess, Madam Clerk, would you like to call the roll again? Dr. Chase is absent. Mr. Cater? Here. Ms. Egan? Here. Ms. Hazard? Here. Ms. Healy? Here. Mr. Foster? Here. Ms. Young? Here. All right. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance?
I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, do we have a motion to approve the agenda? Motion to approve the agenda, but I would like to add an amendment to um, uh, amend the agenda to add an agenda item for the school board to accept the Board of Supervisors appropriation, $99,500 for the purchase setup and furnishing of a modular classroom unit at Hartwood Elementary School. Second. Okay, and we'll add that as the uh, last of the action items. Is that agreeable? <clears throat> that would be... Thank you. 9.07. Yeah, that'd be great. All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries unanimously. That brings us to our first uh, special presentation, the year-end report from the Gifted Advisory Committee. Good evening. My name is Maureen Sigmund, and my husband and I have rising kindergartner, second grader, and fifth graders at Anthony Burns Elementary. I also have had the pleasure of serving as the chair of the Gifted Advisory Committee this year. At this time, I would like to invite my fellow committee members to stand up and accept our thanks for their service. Thank you, Thank you to each of you. It has been my pleasure to know, get to know and work with you this year, and I look forward to uh, continuing our relationship. I would also like to introduce uh, fellow committee member Jacqueline Kuzma, who will deliver our year-end report. Jacqueline is a rising sophomore at North Stafford High School, where she participates in the Commonwealth Governor's School Program. Jacqueline has been involved in the FOCUS program through elementary and middle school, and she has also participated on a Destination Imagination team for the past seven years. Our committee's work this year has been launching to endless possibilities. We are celebrating the school board's approval of three additional full-time focus teachers, which allows every school to have a full-time focus teacher. With these additions, we will launch into excellence our gifted services. In order to complete launch, we will need to inspire and empower our school community in order to help our students excel. The community recognizes the need for more members to represent all areas of Stafford County. We also recommend continued professional development for parents and staff. With a full-time focus teacher at every school, these are just some of the benefits now afforded to students. Our recommendations support our goals of increased engagement and communication, as well as continuing professional development. the additional staff and achievement of our goals, our students have been launched into learning opportunities which will enable, which will enable them to reach for the stars. Aww. Hold on, am I, am I getting oh. a star? Am I gonna get a star? <laughs> you gonna give me a star? Oh, oh, I am getting a star. Oh, oh wow. Oh, well, that's good. That's good. I need a stress star. That's a stress star. The committee would like to thank the school board for their continued effort and time. Nice job. Thank you. I need you to train all staff members on a succinct, powerful, <laughs> exciting briefing, okay? Come up to the Pentagon and train my guys too. Thank you. Good job. All right. 
Ms. Healy, if I could just make a comment. I wanted to, of course, thank um, having our students, have, being on the Fine Arts Advisory Committee, we also have students on our committees, and I'm going to invite you to invite your friends to get involved in the committees, because they really do bring such a great perspective, and it makes it even real, more real, is having those students. I know you've said the same. So we have lots of openings for next year, so um, invite your friends, but the, it's really... It really is, makes a difference. Right. So. And, and invite their parents as well. <laughs> yeah. Good. Thank you. And, and I'm, I'm personally incredibly excited about those focus teachers because every year that's been a recommendation, and this board has made it happen. So it's, 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 what thank an you, achievement. What an achievement. That brings us to the year end report from the Technology Advisory Committee. Okay, so Nicole is going to dim the lights now for you guys. And I understand that I only have 10 minutes, but I believe she might have given me a couple minutes because she's so <laughs> clear and concise. Fair. That's fair, that's fair. So if I can have 14 minutes, maybe 14.30, I can get everything in. All right, good evening everybody, school board members, Acting Superintendent Kale. My name is Erin Ewing and I am the chair of the Technology Advisory Committee uh, for this school year. Uh, this evening I'm going to go over a brief overview of our activities throughout the year, uh, provide a couple recommendations, and talk through a couple of the initiatives uh, within the Instructional Technology and Information Services Department. So. What we're going to do, um, we're going to also end with a really quick video to show you exactly why we believe that we need to uh, continue the investment in technology in our schools. This quote by George Soros, we believe, gets to the heart of um, the challenges facing our school division and, and school divisions in general and bridging the gap and ensuring that technology is, is transformational and um, getting the right balance in the classroom. We're not trying to replace teachers, we're just trying to help them do the best that they can with the students. The tech uh, finished up last year um, sitting in the <coughs> computer lab down the, down the hall, uh, kind of contemplating and talking about the transformation of an elementary school lab, a computer lab, into a classroom space. I myself am a parent of two elementary school students and I was very nervous at this prospect. Um, I work in IT consulting and I understand the need for them to have the touch and feel of all different types of operating systems and, and devices in general um, so they can be competitive in the outside world. So I was very hesitant in this, this discussion or even the thought of transforming the computer labs. So we started this year um, with a new executive director of technology, Ms. Nicole Stewart who I think has brought a, a wealth of new ideas to the table. And um, upon our first our committee meeting, we talked about potentially taking some field trips or site visits throughout the schools to see what was actually going on. Our first site visit was to Stafford Elementary School. And this, I, I, if, you if you have an opportunity to see what they're doing at Stafford Elementary, it's, it's fabulous. Um, we met with a teacher, Ms. Tiffany Sharon, who, who is innovative, creative, and a risk taker. Um, she has been allowed to take the risk of integrating technology on a one-to-one -one type basis within this classroom by her uh, principal, uh, Ms. Mary Foreman, um, who, from my understanding, has created an environment that allows the teachers to kind of go outside the box and, and, and do some innovative things for the students. 
Um, I walked into this situation a skeptic because this had been their computer lab and I, this is a fifth grade classroom in which the kids were taking virtual field trips uh, via GoPro to uh, saf African safaris where they could actually ask questions and have an interactive activity or interactive discussion with the safari guide. Um, and you know, I, I left this situation wanting to enroll my fifth grader in her class. So I, I, my perspective was changed dramatically. Um, it was fantastic. So I think that kind of gets to the heart of what Mr. Resky was presenting for his uh, potential high school classes, for some of the other potential initiatives that are going to be talked about here. Our second, our second site visitor field trip was to Brook Point High School. And at Brook Point, we talked to the Virginia Stars program. And we talked to an individual, Mr. Jeff Tenderman, who is in uh, pink around the table, um, who, after hours, on his own time, supports this club for the students to get hands-on or hands-on skills uh, repairing uh, computer hardware, installing software, and troubleshooting. This, this program enables the students to have that educational aspect and then what they do is they take these, these pieces of equipment and they donate it to the community, to individuals who might not otherwise have access to a laptop or um, you know, to a laptop. I think there were some desktops as well. Uh, what this, this uh, example in and of itself resulted in the donation of some Stafford County um, non-school division departments donating their hardware to this initiative. So just through the participation of, um, I can't remember her name, uh, participation of a, a new member during this visit in and of itself. I um, highly recommend checking out that STARS program if you get a chance. So last but not least of our site visits was the North Stafford renovated library space. This, if you have not gone to see this space, uh, please make a, a priority to do so. This space, um, You'll see here in the pictures, the meeting rooms, which are adorned with historical pictures or pictures of historical Americans, are actually meeting rooms that, that mirror and are sometimes better than corporate America. Um, the kids can plug their laptops into the desk um, or into the integrated technology from the desk and collaborate um, right there as a group. They have a, a whiteboard walls where they can you know, brainstorm and, and have all kind of innovative ideas and, and work together. It was really fabulous. That, um, so that's just the meeting rooms. They also have a, what's called a maker space in which they offer like STEM activities, including but not limited to um, <laughs> digital printing. The high school kids are, are allowed to just come in here and let their, you know, um, figure out the art of the possible in high school. Um, so what I'd like to draw your attention to is the data that's on the screen and the increase in walk-ins and class visits to this space. So of course in December the increase is about 200% because it was all new and wonderful. Um, and it kind of went down a little bit, but it's still over 100% increased utilization. Um, the class use of the space shows that it has transformed their classroom into something that um, they didn't have before. The collaboration capabilities with the technology in the different areas of the library, it, just phenomenal. Um, so that takes me to next year. These five um, principals have signed up to uh, offer similar site visits, field trips for our, our committee. And um, we look forward to doing that rather than just sitting in the computer lab. Um, what uh, a big takeaway from each one of those site visits was really the fact that each one was combined with uh, teachers and staff that were passionate about um, enriching the learning environment of the students. Um, and they were doing so off hours um, <coughs> and on their own time. In 
in front of you are four technology issue, initiatives that are currently ongoing within this department. Uh, I'm just going to read the highlighted sections because I th I'm not going to read this slide. <laughs> the first one is primarily in regards to internet safety and digital citizenship. This speaks to strategic plan goal one, student achievement with the VDOE, providing guidelines for the school divisions to educate students on internet safety. And it is uh, part of the VDOE learning component of the state technology plan. The second initiative is building beneficial, <coughs> excuse me, partnerships with technology-oriented uh, organizations such as ISC Squared and uh, VCCS, or higher education institutions. This speaks to strategic goal plan, or strategic plan goal number two, workforce and staff enrichment. Um, and it provides opportunities for continuing education to existing Stafford County public school teachers and staff. The third one is a Chromebook resources for the ninth grade world history pilot, and that is what I believe um, many might have just heard about tonight. It's an initiative um, that speaks to strategic plan goal one, uh, student achievement, and it is looking to, for the ITIS department to provide social studies, the ninth grade world history, one in ESO, ESOL programs at the high schools, um, as part of the social studies class set of Chromebooks. It, it equates to about 25 Chromebooks per class and approximately 125 Chromebooks per high school. The fourth one is piloting mobile hotspots, uh, mobile hotspot capability within the Title I elementary schools. This speaks to strategic plan goal one, student achievement and communication, devices at home for school to home communication. This goes along with Stafford County and ITIS promotion of broadband technology programs such as Comcast and Verizon. Um, it is, okay, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Those are our initiatives. We have a couple recommendations for you guys. The first recommendation for this evening is that we recommend um, Going by the recommended addition through the Evergreen study, which I believe was in uh, 2015, for a one FTE for a district instructional technology facilitator. This facilitator would be would serve as the primary POC for training, such as we were dis or you guys were discussing earlier uh, with the World History Pilot Initiative and many other technology initiatives throughout the school division. The second initiative, or the second recommendation is I would like to invite, we would like to invite each one of you guys to come to one of those five site visits over the next year. Uh, I thank Ms. Pamela Young, who has been our school board representative, for coming to each and every um, meeting. And she didn't just come and sit there, she came and participated and was an integral part of the discussion, uh, meaningful. And I think that by going to the schools, seeing what they're doing, seeing how the, these Chromebooks that we keep approving and sometimes end up controversial on Facebook, um, you know, seeing how that's really truly making a difference in the educational experience of our children. Um, the second one is, or I'm sorry, the third one is teacher and staff compensation for after hours uh, technology clubs and organizations. Uh, this one goes hand in hand with the CTE uh, committee's recommendation for career and technical student organization activities um, uh, f for that to be compensated on a, uh, a bonus, uh, you know, basis for them to be compensated for their time. So if I have time, I don't know what my time is right now because my timer went off. Um, I'd like to end this with a um, quick presentation. Welcome to today's academic challenge. You may only use what's on your table. There will be three rounds and the questions will get harder. What is the largest animal living today? Team A. Blue whale. Team B. Blue whale. That is correct. 
What is the square root of 144? 12. 12. Correct again. Go, Jimmy. India. India. Neil Armstrong. Neil Armstrong. William, William Shakespeare. Shakespeare. Correct. We are tied. For round two, we're going to give both teams some additional resources. Okay. <laughs> Who was the first president to live in the White House? John Adams. That is correct. Oh my God, bro. Come on. What does the acronym LCD stand for? Wow. Just wow. I can do this. Right? Liquid crystal display. Correct. How did they Go with it, just go with it. Sargasso C. What? That's correct. Eight minutes and 20 seconds. Correct. Samuel Morse. Correct. Denver, Colorado, Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Salt Lake City, Utah. That is correct. Let's pull back the curtain. Please have your team captain open the envelope on the table. 70% of teachers assign homework requiring access to the internet, and yet 5 million households with school-age children do not have high-speed internet service at home. That just puts 5 million other people at a disadvantage, which is not okay. Nearly 50% of students say they have been unable to complete a homework assignment because they did not have access to the internet or computer. I didn't know that the percentage was so high. Everything he does is in the computer. So if he didn't have access to it, he wouldn't have a chance. Someone may not be pulling the grade not because they're not smart, they just don't have access to what all the other kids have. Thank you guys very much. Maybe provide tissues. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Madam Chair, Any if, questions? I, if I could Comments, just real quick. Um, I watched, again, I watched the Board of Supervisors meeting on Tuesday, and this was a topic of conversation with my counterpart, um, Ms. Shelton, who represents the Aquia District, and we've got a lot of areas down by Marlboro Point and whatnot that don't have internet access, and she's, she's currently um, going out into the neighborhoods to canvas to find out who exactly is going, you know, is getting internet service and who isn't, so she's actively doing something about this, which Excellent. makes me real happy, um, but I think she would be if she's not watching already, I don't know if she is or not. Um, she, I'm sure she would love to see this video. So if you if you could make it available to her, well, you guys have is, it. They need to get in touch with us because we're in touch with TCC also. So we're working on this together. Yeah, so. Cindy Shelton is the. I was Cindy, talking about oh, the supervisor. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. <laughs> so it's my understanding that you guys have this brief. Uh, if not, I know Miss Stewart can get it to you. Awesome. I'll I'll share it with Miss Shelton. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Awesome, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you guys. Much. Thank you for the extra time. All right. Uh, that brings us to citizen comments. Mm. Yes, Spirit. Very nice. Good job. Individuals wishing to comment at this time, I do so by responding to the general invitation of the chairman. Speakers shall identify themselves by name, address, and organizational affiliation if the spokesperson represents an organization. Speakers shall also announce the purpose topic of their comments. Three minutes shall be allotted to speakers. Chairman reserves the right to restrict total citizen comments received at any particular meeting to a predetermined, predetermined maximum number of minutes with the approval of the board. 
citizen comment which is profane, abusive, or threatens the imminent physical harm shall be ruled out of order by the chairman. Although the board provides opportunity for citizen comment and individuals desiring to register complaints against the division employees or division programs, services, or activities, may be also utilize the procedures outlined in Stafford County Policy 1113, public complaints. Thank you, Mr. McOsker. Our clerk is just gone to retrieve the paper. So anyone that has already signed in, feel free to come forward and we'll be calling your name. Oh, Mr. Wadowski. Welcome. Eight Picket Lane. <laughs> That's a nice shirt. Rock Hill District. That's a nice shirt. Oh, your dress is, oh. see, I didn't even see it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Wadowski. He doesn't have to say that now. He doesn't have to say where he's from. Okay. I just want 10 minutes. <laughs> well, you get three. <laughs> we're, we're, we're equitable here. Everybody gets the same. That's what Lady Justice says. That's why she wears a blindfold. Okay, Paul Waldowski, Pickett Lane. I'm here to give you my year-end report from the 2030 Cicada Advisory Committee. The 2013 Cicadas have finished kindergarten this year and they're disappointed with the change of the school year but i'll get to that secondarily i listened to both committees and i just want to make some observations both of them use the word inspire remember the brain the, the word brain's got in in it the word mind's got in in it the word thinks got in it so Think of all the in words that I'm gonna point out to you. Get involved, remember, even India was there. Innovative, initiatives, the internet. In 2015, that was my campaign aspect, but the voters decided to vote for people to take care of HOAs versus students. And I saw a bumper sticker that motivated me to come today, and it said, Obama 2016, just to annoy you. I'm gonna do Waldowski 2019 just to annoy you. I'm gonna make Stafford great again, but I'm not gonna run because I don't wanna be one of seven in a gerrymandered county. Now I went through the Garrisonville district, which I owned a townhouse in, in 1990 to 2010, and I saw HH Pool has lines and we in the Rock Hill District don't have lines in the Garrisonville Elementary School or the Rock Hill Elementary. I also saw that there was a crosswalk brand new there that looks like favoritism to me. You all got my letter to the Justice Department in 2011. If you don't know about gerrymandering, I'm not blowing smoke or vapor. I don't touch any of those aspects. If you ask a high school student in this uh, county. I have a couple of teenagers who are trying to make money. You change the school year and they just tell me SOL. You fill in the blank. Snow White is my favorite chairman of everything and if Snow White was the superintendent of the schools, which she was, she would have to figure out when to call on happy or grumpy. She never would bother sleepy because he's not around. Sneezy, she would say, God bless you. Bashful would just ignore her. Dopey, she wouldn't even consider. And Doc, well, if you're new on the board, you'll probably vote to change the school board. Always remember those who finished last in medical school. I learned this as a medic during Vietnam from a surgeon. We still call him Doc. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? Please come forward. And we have a, a sign-in sheet for you to sign after you make your comments. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Catherine Nordine. I live at 47 Reserve Way and Fredericksburg, well, still Stafford County. <laughs> um, I am a Hartwood parent, and I am coming to speak to you about a couple different things. Um, I wanted to state quickly that there are currently 233 homes being still built in Hartwood. There's 385, including the uh, Silver Apartment Complex in Rocky Run. Falmouth has 225 new homes going up right now. Margaret Brent has 396. 
and Rocky Run, well, I already touched Rocky Run. We are bursting in the Heartwood area, and we ended our school year at 108% and we're projected to be at 110% this, this beginning of the school year. And uh, with all due respect, I watched you vote down the trailer at the last meeting. And we have the second oldest school in the county. We have the smallest classrooms. I live at the school. I volunteer. I help kindergartners read. I'm there at their beck and call. And there is no space. I mean, we're on the brink of breaking fire codes by where classrooms are, are positioned. I. I'm here just to urge you to consider please allowing the trailer. I know funding has already been provided by the Board of Supervisors. They found it, and I'm just asking you today to please sign off on it. It's the right thing to do. It's not a, a full solution. The full solution is we actually really desperately need a new school. I know redistricting is high on the list, and I know you think you can solve it all. I'd like to see what that looks like without a two-hour bus ride, just saying. But I will leave that in your hands and ask that you would please, for, first and foremost, consider where we're going to put our kids this fall. Where are they going to go? And if you haven't been to Hartwood, please go and take a walk around. Look at the itty bitty school that can. It is a phenomenal place. They've got wonderful teachers. They need a better location. You know, the next place, the next trailer, because that will come is going to take up where the kids play at recess because you know the front of the school is where our kids play. And that's the only other place where you have access to the bathrooms. So we're gonna just start taking more and more and more away from this little school over the years. And our problem's getting bigger. I moved here from 610. This is my first year as a Hartwood parent. We went to Park Ridge Elementary. You know, it's, it's heartbreaking. And this school and this community needs some help. You know, we are all packed, and the solution really is a new elementary school. So thank you for your time and your consideration, and have a wonderful night. Oh, could you sign in, please? Yes. Yeah. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the board? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment period and come to the board members. Is there any disciplinary committee reports? Yes, Madam Chair, I have one. On June 22, 2018, the committee of the board met to consider a disciplinary matter that the committee suspended student A for the entirety of the 2018-2019 school year, with the first traditional semester being actively served and the second semester being held in abeyance. Student A is also permitted to attend the regional alt alternative education program during the suspension period. The next board meeting will be held at August 16th at 4 p.m. This meeting will be closed to public in accordance with the Code of Virginia. Thank you, Mr. McOsker. That brings us to the board member comments. We'll start with Ms. Hazard. Um, let's see, first and foremost, I'm excited about the addition of, um, of Dr. Kisner join, joining us. And I, I just wanted to say to the community, there's a variety of, of um, things about him that were, was very appealing to me, but let me just speak quickly to two. I'm excited about his experience with growth and, w and his longevity, um, that he has been with his school district for eight years. Um, many of us were engaged in um, um, interviews with um, references, and I, I will tell you he will have a heartbroken community. Not that I wish that on them, but I'm kind of excited to, <laughs> to get that he's coming here. But the other thing about growth um, is, is very interesting because he has very much been at the center of one of the largest, um, one of the rapidly growing communities, as was spoken by the prior speaker. Growth is something we all know is coming here in Stafford, but it's not just people. It's also our ESL population, our special ed population, many other populations, and it's also it's a unique area that um, Dr. Kisner, I think, has um, managed successfully in his prior division and brings that to us. Um, as many of you may know or may not know, um, currently across our division, we are at 32.2% free and reduced lunch. So that is just something that I think we as a community have tried to marry some of the needs and concerns of our community matched up with Dr. Kisner, and I'm excited to see him in August, but really excited to see him in September. Um, on another positive note, I wanted to give a shout out to the North Stafford High School um, 
Renaissance Student Leadership Summit. I know some kids that are there and they're having a great time. And I wanted to just also thank um, the board for approving that request to move those North Stafford lockers ahead because otherwise they would not have been funded. And I don't know if you know, but today the lockers were removed from North Stafford High School. I got a very excited student who couldn't wait to say that. Um, also, um, the uh, Virginia School Board Association Legislative Committee, I know that's more a committee report, I will just say we had a very good meeting and there's some um, interesting proposals coming through that will come um, as we move forward, but all the divisions across our division, across, excuse me, our Commonwealth, we're very much talking about the rise of ESL, alternative testing, and other things like that. So it's really interesting that we're all somewhat um, addressing the same issues. So I look forward to us doing that. And I, of course, um, I thank the um, Hartwood resident and those that have came, came tonight, as always. And that's it. Thank you. Mr. Cater. Good evening, everyone. I, too, just want to welcome Dr. Kisner to the family. Um, uh, really, really very excited to have him on board, and I hope that as time progresses, you all will be too. Um, just really quickly, uh, as we checked references, one of the things that uh, really excited me about uh, Dr. Kisner was um, a brief conversation I had, but I shared with the board that um, the, the the woman used the word brilliant, and uh, it's just, you know, it's not a word that you really just throw around lightly, and as I had further conversations um, with, with Dr. Kisner, I, I felt the same. Um, and I'll just leave you with this. Uh, when we decided that he was our top pick, uh, we were also made aware um, that he enjoys the band Yarn. So when I left our board meeting, just feeling really good and positive, um, and I'm all about the good feelings, um, I pulled up Yarn on um, iTunes, and the song came on, This Is Our Year. And uh, I, you know, if, if you're, you know, if you like the, the good fuzzy feelings like I do, uh, pull up the song, listen to it, and, and know that that's just kind of how I feel about um, our new representation, our new leadership. Thank you. Ms. Young. Oh, sorry. Wasn't ready. I wasn't listening. Good evening, everyone. Um, I too welcome Dr. Kisner. Um, I also, um, you know, had uh, references that I had to call, and I'm very excited because he is familiar with redistricting, and uh, he also has experience with um, growing diverse uh, populations. Um, I remember on one of the references uh, the young lady that. Uh, I was uh, interviewing, um, she was almost in tears. She was very happy for him, but she was almost in tears because I was gonna take Dr. Kisner away from her. So she, you know, so she was, you know, almost had me in tears and you know, I'm not an easy uh, baller, but thank you very much, Nicole, for putting tears in my eyes today. Mm -hmm. um, I also wanted to mention that um, I did get an email from um, Supervisor uh, Jack Snellings from Hartwood. And um, in that email, I think uh, he mentions uh, that we refused to take the matter up of the placing the tra trailer in Hartwood. Um, that was not uh, a true statement. Uh, we voted as a board not to place the trailer. Um, but uh, we appreciate that uh, Chairwoman Bomke and Supervisor Snellings took the time to visit one of our many elementary schools so that they could get a first-hand understanding of why the school board was so strongly in favor of the purchase of Old Fredericksburg Christian School. It should provide much needed relief for all of our elementary schools in the fall of 2019. Upon Chairwoman Bumke's request, Dr. Chase and I instructed staff to examine space conditions at Hartwood and all of the other elementary schools that are facing crowded conditions next year. We ask staff to do this because neither one of us have been elementary school principals. We do not know all the complexities of space allocations in elementary schools. We learned that Hartwood will have some relief next year because the ECSE pre-K is being moved out, freeing one classroom if necessary, a second classroom can be opened up by the increasing class size by two students in fourth and fifth grades. These increases will not affect state requirements for SCPS to receive classroom reduction funds for Hartwood. We learned that next year, Winding Creek Elementary School, which is in my district, is expected to be the only elementary school in the county 
to not have a dedicated room for art and music. Music will probably have to be held on the stage next year at Winding Creek. Also because Winding Creek is not Title I and does not qualify for classroom reduction funds, class sizes in grade K3 will probably be larger than at Hartwood. We really appreciate the support that we have received from the Board of Supervisors this year. We know that all of them care an enormous amount for the children of Stafford County, but we are committed to equity and fiscal responsibility. We only have one trailer. Two schools can make good arguments for its use. Moving the trailer will cost one teacher's salary. The majority of the board understands that our division is currently experiencing growing pains. Next year is going to be challenging, but relief is in sight. We prefer to use the money that would be needed to move the trailer for a more lasting impact on our schools. Finally, I just want to say to all of our elementary schools, teachers and principals, we know you are having a challenging job. Thank you for everything you do to educate and advocate for your students. Thank you. Ms. Egan. I'm just going to keep it brief. Um, I, would, I too would like to welcome Dr. Kisner. Um, I'm looking forward to him starting here and rolling up his sleeves with all of us and getting back to making all those great things happen that we have, we've been on this trajectory um, for. Um, I also want to thank all the candidates, the superintendent candidates that, um, that showed an interest in leading the school division and, and the, um, you know, them taking the time to submit resumes and, and um, those that were selected to come here for tr some of them traveling. Um, so thank you for that. And my last uh, note is I wanted to say happy birthday to Chairman of the Stafford Board of Supervisors, Meg Bomke. She just had a birthday. So that's it. Thank you. Mr. McOsker. Sure. You know, I'd like to say when Mr. Cater sent me the yarn <laughs> link, I opened it. <laughs> And I was teary-eyed. Yeah, right. I thought she was like, I didn't, I really didn't know she thought that was that positively of me. Now I find out that she did, oh, she sent it to everyone. But it was about Dr. Kisner I'm finding now, so I'm not, you know, I, I was really nice to you. It was, I was really nice to you all for the last two hours. I'm just letting you know that. So. All right. I'll take it back. All right. I don't take it back. I was, I was like, what the heck is he? He's his yarn. Let me try it. Okay. Uh, so anyway, I'm very excited about the new superintendent, Dr. Scott Kisner, right? Harrisonburg School Division. You know, he's an instructional-based leader that thrives on thinking outside the box and, and solving difficult, difficult educational issues. Uh, we'll see him in August for his official start in one September. He's, he's a great pick, all right? Uh, number two, um, at our August meeting, we want to, I'd like to bring uh, to the board, if they so shall uh, agree, a waiver for our administrative assistance that were moved to the 12-month employees uh, this early in this summer. Um, the, it was a move that, uh, simply put, I want to make sure that the board uh, supports a waiver of policy to allow um, our administrative assistants that were moved to the 12-month contract to earn as much leave as they've been serving in the Stafford County Public Schools. So if they're 10 months and they've served 15 years, they, we, once we force them to do a 12-month contract, they go back to zero years of, uh, um, um, what do we call it? Um, Seniority? Seniority, yeah, that's the best word. Zero years of seniority, and so I want to take a look at the contract with HR and uh, see if we can't do a one-time waiver and move them up with the board support. I think that's the only fair and balanced thing to do. I'll tell you, in the federal government around here, if uh, someone is forcibly moved to their job in the FBI or one of those other uh, uh, three-lettered uh, industries, uh, they will buy your home. Uh, matter of fact, our CGS director just got their home uh, bought by the government because they were forcibly moved and they couldn't sell it in time, right? So uh, doing something little like this is what uh, uh, shows that as a board and as a school division senior staff that we kind of care about our folks, right? So uh, if there's other uh, things in that that are, there's always tails, so there's always other issues, third order effects. Um, hopefully uh, Lisa will uh, let us know about it and we'll talk about that, off that offline, thanks. All right, thank you, Mr. McCosker. Yep. And I, I, I'd ask Ms. Kale to um, send us a report on that, if you could, before the, the meeting. We certainly don't want to disadvantage anyone that's 
providing a very important service to to our schools. Um, I, I want to add my thanks to everyone who participated in the superintendent search and to um, to follow up on Ms. Egan's remarks. Um, in addition to the the great pool of candidates we had, uh, we had a, a fantastic support from our staff, from our, our students, and from our community uh, in responding to the request for, for information from the search firm that was very important to us and to the firm to set forth what our community is looking for for our next superintendent. And all of the candidates that we interviewed had very um, much studied the results of that uh, survey that was sent out and that was uh, put together by the search firm. So thank you to everyone who participated. I think we're incredibly uh, fortunate to have Dr. Kisner coming, um, someone with his level of experience and expertise, as well as Ms. Hazard referred to his longevity. He's been with his school district for eight years, and I, I know it's going to be hard for them to lose him, um, but he's looking forward to uh, new challenges here in Stafford, and we will certainly <laughs> give them to him, <laughs> including the redistricting. I just want to make a comment. We had um, just received a letter. I, I gave it to our clerk to, to share with the board members um, from Mrs. Bomke, you know, wanting to, to uh, confirm the school board's uh, intentions with respect to redistricting, particularly with respect to the uh, the acquisition of Fredericksburg Christian School. We just finished a. Um, <laughs> Extended work session, and the, the, the last part of that was really what I will call a brainstorming session um, with the school board to discuss what our, our plans, our goals, and um, you know potential avenues on how to, to reach that with respect to redistricting. And I think, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think there is a general consensus that uh, um, assuming that we do acquire the Fredericksburg Christian School and that will free up the room in our, our schools, you know, that there is is a desire and a plan to do a redistricting. We're going to um, look for outside assistance as well as assistance from staff, recognizing that, that staff is limited and they have a lot of other things going on. Um, and we've asked the, um, the Mrs. Kale to bring uh, back to us some proposals at the next meeting on you know how we can go forward with that. We also discussed how important it's going to be to us to have community input. That is, that is essential because this is going to be um, a significant challenge and, and also an opportunity um, to, to, to correct some of these um, situations such as was mentioned this evening with the, the, the overcrowding. We have some schools that are overcrowded that have a lot of growth that's projected in their areas. We have some other areas that are built out and there, there is some room in the schools. So if we can do it all at once, we can have a plan, do it orderly and um, and hopefully with minimal um, pain to us <laughs> as well as well as to, to the community because I can I can tell you from experience it is very painful. It's, I've I've been through redistricting as a parent and I've been through it as a school board member and it's it's never easy. But um, the results will, will hopefully be, be well worth it to everyone when it's done. All right. That brings us to the acting superintendent's comments. Mrs. Kale. Yes, good evening. I'd like to extend my welcome also to Dr. Kisner. We look forward to walk, working with Dr. Kisner for the upcoming years. Notice I said plural years. <laughs> we know that he will certainly soon find out how fortunate he is to work with such an outstanding group of students, staff, and parents in Stafford County. And we look forward and welcome him to our Stafford family. In addition, as you know, summer is one of the most busiest times of the school year. Um, often people think it isn't, but it is. We have summer school going on, construction going on, et cetera. And at the same time, our schools and our departments are getting ready for the upcoming school year. Um, just to make you feel at ease, HR and our school staff, they're working extremely hard daily, hourly, to try to fill vacancies as fast as possible. In addition, we're working on reflecting from the past school year and working on plans for the upcoming school year. And one of those plans is our um, Stafford Leadership Academy, which will be held August 7th, 8th, and 9th. And this year we'll be holding it at Stafford High School for all of our leaders. It will include diversity and implicit bias training, safety and security and threat assessment training, 
and summit connections and breakout sessions for elementary and secondary administrators. So we look forward to having you all uh, come and we will be sending out special invites later. Thank you. Thank you. All right, um, that brings us to the consent agenda. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve consent. Motion by Ms. Hazard. Second. Second by Ms. Egan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do you have any announcements for us, Mrs. Kale? Yes, it is my pleasure to announce the following administrative appointments approved by the school board. Ms. Alyssa Frazier will assume the position of assistant principal at Hartwood Elementary School. Ms. Frazier has been the ESOL facilitator with us since March 2017. Prior to her current role, she was an ESOL teacher at Rocky Run Elementary for 10 years and reading specialist at Annie Moncure for one year. Ms. Frazier has also served as a first grade teacher in Arizona and Texas and reading consultant for McGraw-Hill. Ms. Frazier earned a Bachelor of Science degree in elementary education with a minor in Spanish from Salisbury University and a Master's of Arts in Teaching degree from National University in California. She completed courses for the Administration and Supervision Endorsement from George Mason University. Congratulations to Ms. Frazier. Mr. Timothy Miller will assume the position of Assistant Principal at Kate Waller Barrett Elementary School. Mr. Miller comes to us from Johnson Elementary School in Charlottesville, Virginia, where he was an assistant principal for the last two years. Prior to becoming an assistant principal, Mr. Miller served as dean of students at Osborne High School in Manassas and as a health and physical education teacher in Prince William County schools for 12 years. Mr. Miller holds two bachelor's of science degrees from Indiana University of Pennsylvania, one in exercise science and sports management and the other in health and physical education. His master of education degree is from George Mason University. Congratulations, Mr. Miller. We look forward to you joining our Stafford team. Ms. Megan Lawson will assume the position, excuse me, of supervisor of student services. Most recently, Ms. Lawson has been the special education chair and a special education teacher at North Stafford High School. Prior to her 12 years at North Stafford, she served as a special education teacher for five years in Spotsylvania schools. Ms. Lawson earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Hospitality Management from East Carolina University and earned her Master of Education degree with a concentration in Special Education from the University of Mary Washington. She completed coursework for the Administration and Supervision Endorsement from Longwood University. Congratulations, Ms. Lawson. Thank you, Mrs. Kale. That brings us to action items. Uh, 9.01, appoint the voting delegate and alternate voting delegates for the Virginia School Boards Association Delegate Assembly at the 2018 VSBA Annual Convention. Are there any volunteers? Ms. Healy, I will, I will volunteer if you wish. Thank you, Ms. Hazard, because the default is the chair and the vice chair. Thank you. I mean, if, yes, if, do we have if, another if, volunteer? Unless, unless, unless you would like to, if you would like you. it. But, um, the legislative proposals that were brought forward are really exciting, so I'm happy All to share All right, well, I have a, a volunteer from Ms. Hazard and Ms. Um, Decatur's volunteer to be alternate. N anybody else uh, dying to do it? <laughs> All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 All right, got that, Ms. Hall? <laughs> we, we, we have some time to get that in there, but make sure it's on time and we don't revert to the default. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 9.02, authorize the school board chair to sign the annual Virginia High School League insurance applications for the 2018-2019 school year. This is a, a uh, item that comes up every year. Uh, no differences that I'm aware of. Do we have any a motion on this? Motion to approve. Motion by Ms. Egan. Second. Second by Ms. Young. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. 9.03, approve a 10 cent increase to the price of lunch and a 5 cent increase to the price of breakfast at all school levels for the 2018-2019 school year. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve 9.03. Second. Motion by Ms. Egan, second by Ms. Young. Any discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 9.04, approve the acting superintendent's proposed revisions to policies and regulations as reviewed by Oh, I'm sorry. Did, yeah, okay. as reviewed by the Executive Director of Strategic Communication and Community Engagement. We have any, uh, we have a motion. Motion to approve. Motion by, motion by Ms. Egan, second by Ms. Young. Any questions or discussion? Mr. Nelson's here if you have any. No, seeing none. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. 9.05, approve the purchase and implementation of Execute Time software. Motion and to approve. 
<laughs> well, I haven't finished reading it yet. And time clock hardware using remaining enterprise resource planning capital project funds at a cost of 470806 We have a motion by Ms. Young. Motion to approve it. Yes. Second. Second by Ms. Hazard. <laughs> Any discussion, questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries unanimously. 9.06, approve the corrected 2020-2021 school year calendar, corrected due to typographical errors. Do we have a motion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're in a school system. We have a motion that I'm gonna Ma ask Mrs. Kale to um, to just briefly go through these. For motion the to approve. The office. Okay, we motion by Ms. Egan. Second. Second by Ms. Hazard. Uh, Ms. Kale, could you just briefly go through these so um, people will know what we are approving these? Correction of typographical errors, please. Did it fall on a holiday or something? Yes, we're correcting that the Memorial Day holiday occurs on May 31st rather than May 24th. We're also changing exams early release for all grades from May 21st, 25th, and 26th to May 21st, 24th, and 25th. This became a domino effect when we had the mistake on Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. We changed graduation from May 29th to May 22nd. We changed the last day of school from May 26th to May 25th and changed professional days from May 27th, 28th to May 26th, 27th. And we also changed some report card dates that's on the back page for all grades the end of the quarter from May 26th to May 25th and for K through 5 changed the report card date from May 26th to May 25th. Any questions, comments? Yeah, I'd, like to make, Ms. Egan? I'd like to make a recommendation. Um, given the sensitivity um, of this topic at our last meeting, I would ask that this be made available and multiple on our website front page, on our Facebook page, tweeted, whatever we need to do to get it out there to make sure that everybody's got the corrected calendar because we know what happened the last time. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get it out there. Thanks. Thank you. So, um, yeah, Miss Irene beat me to it. Um, in addition to communication, which I was on already, um, are there any other uh, areas that it's impacting that we have to make the change besides, you know, the calendar, like documentation, any things that go out we have to look at? We'll check and make sure, you know, but okay. not that I'm aware of. Okay. I just have... Uh, so uh, I'm, I missed I missed it. So maybe I'm just not thinking straight here. So we changed the graduation date from May to May 22nd. Is now we we're, we're graduating, yes. but the last day of school is three days later. Is that correct? Okay. And is that allowable by Virginia law? We've done that we've, before. We've done we've done that in the past. So I just those, wanted to make those sure Those are that three. Those are three exam days for um, for high schoolers. So I think Spotsy did it that this yeah, year too. Yeah, yeah, just so the principal yeah. certifies that everyone's we, right. So we're good. Okay, that's. We we've done it in the past. It's okay. it's not often, but. Um, All right. I, I'm sorry I didn't pick up on it earlier. I would have sent you an email. I just. just Good question. New on me. Sorry. Good question. All right. No other questions. All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries unanimously. 9.07. Accept the Board of Supervisors appropriation of $99,500 for the purchase and furnishing of one modular classroom unit for Hartwood Elementary School. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Motion by Ms. Hazard. Second by Ms. Decatur. Discussion. If I could, since that was the motion maker. Um, I would ask the board to consider this. This is um, money that is being, new money that is being appropriated to the school board for this particular purchase. Um, to be honest, in my notes, I was going to ask that any of the savings that are associated with the wastewater treatment system, which was being used to fund this in a prior agenda item, go to um, the Ferry Farm renovation because I really like the concepts, Mr. McCusker, that were Thank out you. there and wanna every fifty thousand can help. However, um, in light of that there are um, schools that may have other needs, this frees up that money within our budget to potentially move this trailer to a school that needs it. But um, the reason I believe that I wasn't a, really convinced about a purchase, but having had our discussion about redistricting we have a lot of needs in our schools. Right now we have gotten rid of computer labs. We're getting rid of maybe in some schools. I know at Hartwood Music has moved out now too. I don't want that to be the trend of Stafford County Public Schools, to begin to take all of our resource spaces and make them into classrooms. We will not be having a new elementary school with significant capacity um, for five years. 
I believe that this purchase of this, um, that this purchase that is being really allowed, given to us in some sense by the Board of Supervisors is a asset that we are going to need in the coming years. It may not stay where it is, it may move, but I do believe we are capacity constrained. Even if we do a perfect redistricting, we still have, as we discussed um, in our work session about our smaller schools, some of our schools have certain needs we're going to need that space. We have used it in the past, our, our, our owned trailers, to meet fine arts needs um, at, a, at a middle school, and they love it. And I just think this provides us the flexibility we need going forward for the next several years. And so I will not add this, the part about where we should go with that wastewater treatment system savings, because that money will be freed up. Um, is going to be freed up to us. Um, I will certainly leave that, but I would offer those two potential solutions with that money, but not as part of the motion. Okay. Uh, Chair, a, a comment about that? Um, I'm going against everything that I've been saying for the past five years about trailers. Um, my, my position on it is we shouldn't have them at all, um, number one. Uh, number two, purchase means permanent placement, as far as I'm concerned. And, and, I, and that just goes against everything that I believe in. <laughs> um, but for everything you just said, Ms. Hazard, is why I agreed to be the second on, on getting this on the agenda. We need it. We don't know when funds are going to be available to, to expansions or even build another school. Um, as, as we've been told, the CIP is a fluid document. And you know the five-year projection for a new school could go 10 years. I don't know. So this one purchase might actually be a fiscally responsible way to, to do this at the moment. Um, so I'm going to support it. Any other discussion? Uh, yeah, I'd also like to urge the board to um, to strongly consider this. Um, I would agree that I don't want our status quo to be um, that we're just going to make do, um, and that we're going to settle with art on a cart, um, that those things are going to be acceptable to us. Um, I don't think that that's fair to our students. Um, I agree that it's not equitable. All of our schools uh, need help right now, five out of our uh, 17 elementary schools are projected to be at over 100% capacity at the opening of the next school year. Um, so we're all going to need help. We're all going to need to work together. We're all going to need to find extra space. Um, you know, and I think I, I applaud uh, Ms. Hazard for all the work that you've done um, trying to get Hartwood's needs taken care of. If there are other schools that require trailers, I would assume that other board members would be asking for them, not just denying certain board members of their requests or their needs. If it's something that we need to discuss because other schools need them also, then let's talk about that as a team um, because we're here to take care of all of our schools. Thank you. Any other? Sure, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll jump in. You know, so this, um, here is my position on this issue. This issue came to the board 17 May and it was thrown up on a CIP infrastructure list by the staff. And so it popped up on this infrastructure list along with everything else and says, hey, hey, we need a trailer. Don't you know? And I said, no, no, I don't know. Uh, can you talk to us a little bit more about why you need a trailer? Well, we're going to move it from Stafford Colonial Forge to, and we're going to move it over to Hartwood because Hartwood's crowded. And we know Hartwood's crowded. We know there, and there, we know a, a bunch of other schools are crowded. Uh, but I said, hey, you know, as a board member, as the executive body, can, can you give me some more information on this? So then it came back following uh, the last meeting, it, it, it drug out. We really didn't get any information. Uh, it was brought back on the agenda and quickly moved for approval. And that's why the board said, okay, well, you haven't given us any more information on why you need this. And where, about, where are the other elementary schools also on this issue? Um, and then you lost, we lost the vote on a 4-3. Uh, for the Hartwood trailer. Uh, then the Board of Supervisors went for a visit of the empty school, and it comes back a letter, and it, it, you know, it, so all I'm here trying to do is, is figure out what the heck's going on. Uh, is the school crowded, overcrowded? And then I come to find out tonight that Winding Creek is, now, is even more overcrowded. So t tomorrow, am I going to find out that uh, uh, Hampton Oaks is crowded? What I, gonna, I don't know. Th this is, 
it, this is poor staff work is what it is. And so you got the senior leader up here sitting around going, how are you, you're teeing me up for a decision and it's a bad decision. You, if you tee me up for a bad decision, I'm gonna make a bad decision or I'm not gonna make one at all. Or I'm gonna make one that you don't like. Or that doesn't serve the kids of the county. That's the bottom line. So I wanna provide Hartwood with the, with the capacity of a trailer and now I'm here in Winding Creek. I, so I'm still at a loss of what is the status of the elementary schools? Do they need trailers or not? And it's not a board member's, you know, I'm not the guy or gal up here as the board member getting paid to go run the numbers. We've got a couple of guys making six figures to do that, right? It's not my job to come to you and say, hey, uh, you know, I think we, uh, the elementary school classroom six is overcrowded and, and the uh, music room is being used as something else. I need a trailer. You guys are supposed to tell us that, right? So that's where I'm at. And, and I want to approve this trailer. I, I just I am still in a position of being teed up for a terrible decision. Okay? That's how I feel. Thank Madam you. Chair. Ms. Young, did you? you I already you made my comment. It? All right. Well, I had some concerns about these numbers because when we looked at this before, there wasn't any red. So this round, you know, we're, it's coming to us saying Hartwood's going to be 110 percent, you know, over capacity. And I, I was thinking, how could that happen without, you know, adding programs or adding significant amounts? So I have been doing some inquiries, and I have learned that there is. Um, an alternate way of looking at our program capacity in our schools. And part of this has to do with the number of students that we calculate can populate a classroom. And my understanding is that throughout the school division for the six schools that are on the reduced, um, what do we call it, reduced? Class size, Cla class size reduction program. Um, we calculate the capacity of those classrooms at 19. But in reality, we staff them for 24. And 24 is what I understand the state allows us to have 24 students in those classes um, and to still keep that extra money that we get to keep the classes reduced. And this is because in theory, our class size that we have a, as a board set for, for K through three is 26 students per classroom. So if we have 24 students per classroom in these reduced schools, then they are two students below. So they're below what we as a board have set. But when we've been calculating the capacity, this program capacity, and, and I'm, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not saying that the numbers are wrong, but I am saying there's another way to look at it. We've been calculating it on the low end. So it looks like our schools are over capacity. When in reality, Hartwood, for an example, which has 15 classrooms in first, second, and third grade, if we calculate it based on 24 students per class rather than 19 per class, there is an extra capacity of 75 students in the school. That doesn't even include the fourth and fifth grades, which are calculated two under as well. So we add those in, we've got 18. So right away, looking at these numbers, an alternative view, I know it's this, and we'll have to, to get this, but I'm, I've been, gathering this information, and I, I believe this is, is accurate, but we've got 18 for the fourth and fifth in capacity, plus 75 in first, second, and third. There's no change in kindergarten because that's set at, at, the, at, the, uh, at the 24, correct? Mm -hmm. So if in fact that is accurate, and, and if we've got those numbers, then we've got approximately 100 student capacity at Hartwood. So then we don't need credits for Kristen. 
This doesn't have anything to do with prejudice. Can, can, I, can I finish my comments, please? This doesn't have anything to do with Frederick's for Christian because Frederick's for Christian is going to remove 18 classes from throughout the schools. Do we have do, do we have those numbers? I know we were looking at it and it we possibly in draft. Speak to your okay. Mm, well, sure. Of the numbers we've been given. Yeah. Okay. Well, I don't think we've been given these numbers just, at this point. This is just my understanding. Is that Mrs. Kale? Is that all right to call yeah. Matt forward, please, Mr. Townsend? And this isn't just Hartwood. This is across the board. This is for all of these schools. That's why I'm saying that we don't need prejudice for Christian, if that's the case. It has nothing to do with that because that is the preschool, and that is 18 classes throughout. But we don't have to move the preschool classes, is what I'm saying. Matt Townsend, Supervisor of Planning and GIS, Suffolk County Schools. Hello. Hello, Matt. Could, could you address the way we're calculating based, based on the figures, and I'm just going to use Hartwood as an example because it's a topic of conversation tonight. The figures that show that Hartwood is 110 percent, you know, over capacity for projection and what basis of, um, you know, what class sizes were used for that calculation. Sure. And then address, you know, my question about whether there's an alternative way to look at that and still be eligible for the, uh, to be eligible for the, the reduced um, class sizes as well as be within the Stafford County School Board staffing standards. Sure. Thank you. So what went into the program capacity calculation for the 2017 school year are the assumption that every kindergarten through third grade classroom can hold 24 students and every fourth and fifth grade classroom can hold 25 students. This is in line with the VDOE's recommended class size, not their maximum class size, which is 29 kindergarten, 30, one, two, and three grades, and then 35, fourth and fifth. So these are the recommended numbers. These are the goal numbers of the Stafford County um, staffing standards. And those are the numbers that are within our ES Ed spec. So that's the root of that assumption right there. However, if we're looking at or the alternative, well, let me get into class size reduction first. So in the, in the CSR report, there are two columns that relate to limiting the class size for all of the affected schools. The first is uh, labeled student to pupil rate or student to teacher ratio, and that is limited at all of our schools, except for Hampton Oaks at 19. Hampton Oaks it falls into the next threshold of impact impacted CSR or free and reduced lunch percentage-wise. So they're at 18, 18, yep. Um, however, three columns to the right of that, it gets into the maximum allowed class size. And that is 24 at all of our schools, except for Hampton Oaks, which is limited to 23 maximum. So the assumption that was used in the program capacity calculation was that student to student to teacher ratio is the number to apply, is the student loading factor of all of the K through three classes at these affected schools. Since that assumption was made, we've got with um, HR and we've learned that how they actually staff that school is to the maximum 24, because in order to reach that 19 to one ratio, they're allowed to count in PE teachers, art teachers, music teachers, teachers that don't carry a student uh, population or student capacity to themselves. So the alternative way of looking at that is saying, okay, take the maximum amount of students that we can, which is 24 for our class size reduced schools, and then take a look at our ES staffing standards and take the maximum allowed by those staffing standards at, which is 24 for kindergarten, 26 for first, second, and third grade, and 27 for fourth and fifth. If you maximize those, if you max all those numbers out to show what would really potentially be in each one of those spaces, you, or can be in those spaces according to our staffing standards and according to VDOE for these class size reduced schools, you arrive to a much larger number for capacity. Can I ask how many of those are recommended to have IEPs or 504s? 
if we're, at, if we're putting 27 kids in a, in a classroom, are they putting limits on, on how, many they, how many they can have that have IEPs or 504s? Or are we going to have a teacher that's going to be working with 27 students that have IEPs? I'm not aware of a limited or of a limit for IEPs. All I'm suggesting is that there is another way to look at our program capacity, particularly with the class size reduction schools. If we're staffing at 24 per class, why would we not count at 24 per class? Because realistically, we're not staffing for 19. Yet when we count for 19, it looks like we are significantly over capacity when there's, um, there's about a 25% difference in those numbers. I've I'm, I'm just started asking these questions. I'm getting this information. It's still something that I want to process. So I am not prepared to support a trailer at tonight. I would certainly consider if it were brought back at the next meeting. We can not only go through, um, through this data, but we can also look at, at Winding Creek. Because my understanding is if these numbers are recalculated, that Winding Creek capacity is actually higher than Hartwoods. And Winding Creek, remember, is not a class size reduction school, so they don't have the benefit of having that, that smaller number. They're counted at the maximum that we have for, um, you know, for our standards. And these are standards that were set you know, by the board. One year, though. That's true. It's one year. And I understand it's not 27 in the class. It could be 19 in the class, but we're still calculating at 25. I mean, I mean, that's the reality of it. So that why, I, I just don't understand that. I'm sorry. All I hear right now is that these numbers that we've stood behind and told our board of supervisors, these are the ones, these are the numbers that we follow, these are accurate, we have perfected this, you can't trust these anymore because there could be a better way to do it. That is absurd. I'm not saying you can't trust them, I'm saying there's an alternate way and this is something that I have just learned through my questions and particularly because of the change in Hartwood. I, I was concerned that we were in the green and all of a sudden we're in the red. Why are we in the red? What about these other schools? Are there other schools? When Mr. Haran came to us the other um, month, I said, are there any other schools? He truthfully stood there and said, Winding Creek and Rocky Run, potentially. Now we're seeing that, that, that for a fact, Winding Creek you know, has some potential issues. And it sounds like you know, they've already going to be losing a classroom. Hartwood is maybe at this point. It's based on projections. We don't know what's going to happen. It, it might. I mean, I've, I've been a parent at Park Ridge when they had art on a cart, music on a stage. They, had, they were well over 100 over capacity. It was, it was, it was not good. But it was until we built a new school, until we did a redistricting, and, and, and it got worked out. So, you know, at this point, I, I'm, I'm concerned about not looking at, you know, uh, certainly Winding Creek, if not any other school that might need this. I would note that what the supervisors are proposing is to use the money that they're holding back from the schools for this. This is not the supervisors saying, we'll buy you a trailer and we'll pay for it. Yeah. They're taking the money that they're holding back that would have come to the school board as a result of the, um, the state budgets. So traditionally, it has been the school board's decision on how to spend the money you know, that, that is allocated by the state. Ms. So Healy, I, I would ask that, you know, that that decision come from this board as well. Ms. Healy, if I could correct that, though, how the board did that um, uh, particular resolution the money from Medicaid came into our budget what they did is then they withheld their local portion so we did get the Virginia um, additional funds from the budget what they did is withheld their local money and just I call it they changed the color of money they gave us what we were entitled to from the state and they withheld theirs um, I remember Mr. McCosker stating very much in our finance and budget even if we get that 1.5, it's not coming to us. I'd, I would at least like to make sure that some of that money comes to us. I know there are other needs identified by supervisors on the board regarding transportation and many other needs that that 1.4, which is now, which is their local money to decide what to do with, 
I was, I believe that it would be great to use a portion of it to get it to the schools because I would like to get as much of that 1.4, that is local money now, into our schools. And I think this was at least something that was provided to us. I think um, that the, um, there are a lot of competing needs. And at least right now, this was an earmark of some of that 1.4 that was at least coming back to the schools. You know, I don't know what, whether we will get it. I think at one point we thought we would get none. I think we're in the running to get some of it, but I, I don't, you know, I just wanted to clarify that that is their local um, hold. Well, I, I appreciate that. I was taking it based on the, the email that I saw that it, it would come from the money that was withheld from the schools. So I. I, I thought but if they withheld it, then it would have been ours. But that's something we can clar clarify later. And bottom line is we, we don't have it. Um, but if it were ours, then we would be making decisions on, you know, what is, you know, what are the competing priorities. But I mean, I do think, I do think that we need to look at Winding Creek. We need to look at Hartwood and maybe come back in August with Winding Creek and Hartwood if we, they both need a trailer. And based on this new information about the, you know, if indeed these are ghost numbers, and I don't want to call them that, but if these numbers are are not solidified in policy, and you're not going to lose your your uh, your money from the state, and we're calculating at a low, I just it, once again, it just doesn't make sense to me. At, at this time, I think if we wait till August, there will not be the ability to move a trailer. So I think we say to the board of supervisors tonight. We do not want this money um, for this purpose, and let's you know just continue on on our CIP process and hopefully get some relief because I don't think Winding Creek or Hartwood, if we meet on what August 17th, 17th, we are not going to be able to get a trailer up, running, connected, security, and all of that done in that amount of time. When we did it for AG Wright, we we moved it at the end of the year or end of I consider, you know. April, May, sometime around May. So they had the whole summer to get that um, uh, to get that up and running. So I would say if we do not act on it tonight, we just really say back to the supervisors, this is not a purchase we're willing to make. And it appears that the numbers that we have been using, potentially that we spent a lot of time, or I did, saying to them that they were correct, now may not be correct. And I think that is. Um, now, calculations that I do on these relate to actual bodies. So I will be very curious now that we will maybe be looking at engaging somebody to help us with our numbers um, or with uh, redistricting. Perhaps this is another work task for them because I am very disturbed that there is a conception that our numbers are really that far off and um, that we have no um, basis, but if we don't act tonight, this isn't happening for any for any school, Winding Creek or Hartwood. So, let me just say. And the issue for ninety nine thousand also is, and I don't know if that's you, uh, Miss Hazard, is that ninety nine thousand just for the tra new trip, brand new trailer, and like the few of the. Um, and the furniture. Everything. Was that the security perimeter around yeah. it as well? Oh, so the fencing around it for security and, you know, so I, yeah, so I, I missed that too. I just didn't know, you know, because security is an issue of trailers, right? I mean, I mean it, you know, dropping a trailer is a big deal, I think, especially for elementary school. It's a big deal. I mean, and I, I'm, I, I am not prepared to, to jump on this one tonight once again. Uh, there's a lot of unanswered questions, and even more tonight now with Winding Creek. And the, and the numbers. I didn't, you know, I didn't know anything about these numbers. Well, Margaret Brent's right probably right oh, there. Yeah. With I'm, I'm so sure. maybe it's four trailers. You know, maybe it's, you know, FCS opens and we we, we get 19, 20 classrooms in there, freeing up space. I, you know, there's just there's a lot of things that are happening in the next 12 months. And I can we not, call not, the question I, and be done? All right. Please. Yeah. All right. So, call the question. Call the question. All in favor of the motion to approve 9.07. Please say aye. 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 All opposed? No. no. Madam Clerk? All. Ms. Decatur? Aye. Ms. Egan? Aye. Ms. Hazard? Aye. Ms. Healy? No. Mr. McCosker? No. Ms. Young? No. Madam Chair? All right. Brings us to information items.
10.01, approve the award of a vending service contract to CRH Catering Company of Ashland, Virginia for division-wide vending services. This is here for information. If you've um, had a chance to look at the agenda item, we've been requested to uh, move this up to action because um, the uh, plan is to have this in place and ready for the start of the school year. Any questions? Anything that we need Mr. to know? Mr. Dunlop is here. Uh, really, uh, I don't know if you'll remember, we came to you with a vending contract last year also. That was just for food service, not division-wide. Um, unfortunately, the company that was selected was not able to meet their end of the agreement, and it was a mutual uh, understanding that we would part ways at the end of the year. Um, as we were going through the process of developing a new RFP, we were asked to go around the division and kind of survey what was available in all buildings, and what we found was that we had each building somewhat doing their own thing and, and a lot of issues were being had with different things in terms of product quality, um, not really knowing who serviced their machines. Head Start actually has two machines that they didn't even know they had. Um, they weren't getting any commission. Pepsi was just stocking them. Um, so there was, this would get everything centralized. There'd be a little bit more oversight. It would, it would all go through finance um, and, and through my folks, and the commission would come out through my office. So it would be a lot more centralized, and there wouldn't be as many moving pieces. Any other questions on this? Do we have any uh, a motion to move it up to action? Motion to move uh, 1001 action. We have a motion by Mr. McCosker. Second. Second, Second by Ms. Young. Oh, any discussion? Sorry. All in favor of the motion to move to action, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Do we have a motion? Move to approve 1001. Second. Motion by Mr. McOsker, second by Ms. Young. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve 10.01, please say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. So don't go away, Mr. Dunbrack. No, ma'am, I'm not going anywhere. 10.02, <laughs> uh, <laughs> approve the purchase of combi ovens from Alto Harley in the amount of $170,302.60 using budgeted FY19 operating funds. Um, it, just a small correction, it wouldn't necessarily be a, a 19 operating fund. Effectively, um, we were notified by the state that our revenue excess uh, was in addition to the three months that they allow us to have on hand. Um, I tend to squirrel money away and not spend it because I'm always concerned about the <laughs> next issue. Um, however, the state only allows us to keep that three months on hand. Mm -hmm. um, so they did identify funds that we were required to spend. So this would be part of those required spending that we would have to do. Okay. And, and you're requesting that this be moved up, up for action as well? Preferably. We would like to try to get some of them in place before the beginning of the year. And Ms. Ms. Healy, if Thank I could you. make yes. a comment. And Mr. Dumbrack, I know that you watch it on the three-month um, rotating as we move forward, and hopefully we will be getting um, the Fredericksburg Christian School, which yes. you may or may not have already gone and seen. I know I that yes, the kitchen is a, um, an up, an, an, a required upgrade. How about I say that? Yes, so if, as you move forward and you see your three-month one, I know that perhaps some of those funds may be able to be dedicated to that process. I, it's just as a, a forward oh, I, thinking, it is not part of this yeah, discussion. Yeah, we can absolutely do that. Really, the only thing that the VDOE designates those funds for is we <coughs> have to use them for school nutrition. As long Correct. as we're using them for school nutrition, we can use them for capital improvement projects, equipment, any, anything along those lines. And I was just mentioning, and I'm sure to the extent we can any time decrease the amount that we spend for, for that project if um, we can use those um, kitchen right. funds. Keep your eye open for it. I'm sure you Definitely. will coordinate I, you know, with I Mr. Think, Horan and his staff um, yeah, on that. Yeah, I think that, we're looking at staging it a little bit because sure. I think the capacity will change as the needs for So the let's hope your three-month window ha falls at the right time. Yeah, so I, I'm just I, that's I just a broader always, comment. I hope we always have an excess. If we do, that would be a great right. thing. Well, you did a great job in keeping those uh, debts down for us. Yes. Yeah, you Bless called my you. house like 50 times. <laughs> well, I was about I to say, eventually. Hopefully, Two hopefully that worked. Um, All right. So I appreciate that. So, Ms. Hazard, do you have a motion on this one? Sure. I'd be happy to move 10.02 to um, move it to action. Second. Right. A motion by Ms. Hazard, second by Mr. McOsker. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And then carries unanimously. Do we have a motion? Motion to approve uh, the purchase of the combi ovens. Second. Motion by Ms. Hazard, second by Mr. McOsker. Any discussion? 
All in favor, please say aye. 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 All opposed. All right. We Thank took you, you much, first folks. tonight. All right. We didn't keep you waiting. You know, I think. No longer than necessary. Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, folks. All I right. appreciate Thank it. you Thank very you. much. Right. Thanks for all you do. All right. That brings us to 10.03. Approve the purchase in an amount not to exceed 200000 from budgeted FY19 operating funds of classroom computers for the Social Studies and Technology Initiative. This was the subject of a um, work session earlier this evening, which we received information. And uh, this will be coming back to us next month for approval, correct, Ms. Kale? Or was there a request on this one? No. I'd All right. Give this. I'd give this a. Ms. I'd give this the month. Right. Ms. So Ms. this will be coming back to us in August, right. and if it's approved next month, um, that that will be effective for this current uh, school year starting in September. Ms. Healy, could we ask? I know that in work session we asked that the questions that were submitted by the board members there would be responses to them. Could that be attached to this um, board? item when it is brought back to us. Sure. Thank you. And any board members that have uh, questions, please send them to Mrs. Kale, uh, preferably by, um, we'll say next Monday, because this is a, a short week, and that will give you time to farm them out, get the answers, and, and then get it all, all back. May, may I ask how long it would take them to get installed, just so that I could, before the school year starts, like how much time do you need? <coughs> Um, generally, we have a, a really quick turnaround with them, so they'll be in by the time school starts. Um, our vendor works with us to unpack them, deliver them, and put them in place. So uh, two to three weeks at most, so they would be ready for the new school year, and it generally takes you know uh, a little bit of time to get rolling with what they would be using those devices for. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. So right. that'll that'll be back. And remember, if you have any questions, August. send them to Mrs. Kale by um, close of business next Monday. All right. That brings us to 10.04. Approve a payment in the amount of $637,235 from budgeted FY19 operating funds to VML insurance programs for FY19 property and liability insurance coverage. Now, there is a request from staff that we move this to action. And the, um, the basis for that is it will be considered past due if it's not paid by July 31st. We want to pay our bills on time, and unfortunately, the bill was not available in time to put on our June agenda. Because of our July schedule, mm -hmm. that does, you know, make it more challenging for, for a lot of these items that have to come to us. So, um, motion to move to action. Ten second for Thank you. Ms. Hazard has the motion. Mr. McOsker has a second. All in favor of the motion to move this to action, please say aye. 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 Um, do we have another motion? Motion that motion, motion to unanimously. approve the payment um, to VML insurance program. Second. Okay. Motion by Ms. Hazard. Second by Mr. McOsker. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion to approve, please say aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. All right. That brings us to 10.05. Approve the purchase of a power school assessment and analytics license in the amount of 109000 $780 from budgeted FY19 operating funds. Where's, where's Dr. Strike? This is a renewal. Just real quick, what's, what's, just, is this just a renewal? a renewal? Yes. But what is, what is it? I don't even know what it is. Just Why don't you renewal. click on the little thing? There's no yes, it procurement. Per, I read it. So it's. Power assessment analytics from. What is interactive achievement? I just interactive achievement is the former name for what is now called power school assessments. And uh, what, what the school division did, starting with elementary uh, 2016, was start with common form and assessments, which are very much important to our teachers using those common formative assessments to kind of gauge um, and getting feedback on where their student learning is to adjust their instruction. So we have that in all our elementary schools. <coughs> we expanded to middle schools last year, and this is just the renewal. Okay. And because it's, it's exceeding 75000 it's coming to the board for renewal. Okay. Okay? Yes. Will, will we have this before the teachers are here or in time for them to use it if it's, our meeting is uh, August 14th? Right. Um, 
if the board if the board chooses to approve it tonight, the earlier the better. But I believe with our relationship with Pearson, who owns Power School Assessment, we will continue to have it if you want to wait. So it won't, it won't be a um, disadvantage to the teachers not to have it. No. Okay, thank you. Then we'll bring it back for the next meeting. Um, 10.06, approve the award of two professional services consulting contracts, open-ended term contracts for on-call cost estimating services. Any question about this item? Is there, is there a fund? Is there yeah, a cost there. to this? Well, this is as needed. I think this is the, we've, we, we, have, the we have a number contract. of these. That's right. That's right. We, we, it says the school division does not currently have on-call open-ended term contract for cost estimating services, and having one of these services will aid staff in the development of the CIP and for other efforts when needed. So there's no cost it's until we actually uh, use it. We, we currently use Downey and Scott mm -hmm. when we do uh, require some, some services that would help with estimating. Uh, we put out an RFP, we had 13 responses, and uh, we want to offer Downey and Scott mm -hmm. a, a contract along with CCS International, who is, uh, we, we talked with them about helping us in, uh, with preliminary work in our CIP projects and actually giving us right. you know, working models that we could present to, to the board you know, earlier in the process to help us get a, a better grasp on our, our cost estimating. The, um, and this may be for another another time, but I'm not really smart on the contracting. Do we show any, like, I don't want to say favoritism, but do we, do we kind of get folks from Stafford, like businesses from Stafford? Uh, well, we open them up to anyone, but, uh, I mean, the... This particular right. I'm not putting you on the spot no for the contract. No, no, I mean 13. there was no one. From yeah, yeah, thirteen for the contracting question. But I, I mean, I think, you know, I'm just concerned that a lot of the times we're spending a lot of money and it's not, you know, well, are there Stafford folks? We you have know? to be competitive. We have to be. Yeah, I, mean, I get it. I get it. I'm not. I'm, 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 I'm not saying that. We have to be competitive. But one of the questions. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, I'm out of turn. No, you're not. We have to be competitive. But I did ask Scott to let me know if we have. Uh, minority, minorities and uh, women businesses included in there. Okay. That's important to me. And, and local. But anyway. Well, this All will right, be enough. coming back. Thank, that's not you. Go ahead. This, this will be coming back <laughs> be to coming us. Back. If okay. anyone has any questions, they can send them to Mrs. Kale, and she will get them to um, Mr. Haran, who will probably send get them to Mr. To Mr. Sullivan. Thanks, Mr. Sullivan. All right. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you for being here this evening, and thank you for um, Thanks your for the work brief on the Farms yeah. uh, brief as yeah, well. Yeah, thank you. All right, uh, 10.07, approve the acting superintendent's proposed revisions to policy 2102 and regulation 2102R, residency for school admission. Is there any question about um, this item? This will be coming back to us next uh, month for approval. Ms. Healy, the only comment yes. I would make, I assume that this is really to comply with the federal um, legislation regarding military families. I mean, I think that's what this yeah. is mostly. Kayla is shaking her head. Yes. Yes. Okay. No, that's a good question. Okay. All right. All right. Well, this will be coming back to us uh, next month. 10.08, uh, approve the acting superintendent's proposed revisions to policy 2105 and regulation 2105R, non-residents. Any questions about this item? This, again, is it's the, the military relocation. Yes. yes. Yep, okay. Okay, all right, that'll be coming back. 10.09, um, approve the acting superintendent's proposed new regulation 2701R and revisions to policy 2701 threat assessment procedures. Any questions about this item? I may send those. This has not to, not this evening, no, I, I'd rather send them. Okay, well, if there's, if there's any uh, questions, uh, please send them to Mrs. Kale. And Mrs. Kale, when those responses are prepared, could you share them with all the board members as well? Because I think we'd all you know, be in, interested in, in that as well. All right, um, that brings us to the announcement of the upcoming meetings. The next school board meeting date is August 14th at 7 p.m. To be immediately preceded by a work session for which a start time has not yet been determined. Hopefully it won't be five o'clock as tonight's were. Yes. But but we, we did well in getting through and I thank everyone for all the effort and hard work all evening. Thank you. Adjourned. Yep, adjourned.